Looking for things to do in Annapolis, Maryland? Then this video is for you. Whether you already live here locally or are just visiting, here is my top 10 list of things that you must do. All right, in no particular order, let's kick it off. First, with shopping. So here's the deal. Like most medium to large size cities, Annapolis, of course, has your big stores, right? It has your Home Depot and your, you know, I don't know, your Best Buy, Staples, Sam's Club, you name it. We have all those big stores. And yes, I love the accessibility. But as far as, you know, a top 10 list, when I talk about shopping, I'm really talking about the uniqueness of Annapolis. We have a ton of niche little hobby stores. So whether you're into having a fancy hat or maybe you like to go try different teas. Or maybe you really like to dip your bread in some olive oil and balsamic vinegar. You can go downtown and try out different balsamic vinegars. Like, that's pretty cool. It's a little bit special, right? A little bit unique. You could also maybe go to Third Eye Comics and learn how to play a board game. Or maybe you like painting. So go to Muse Paint Bar. You can get some wine or whatever you want there and paint something. We just have a ton of niche little stores and they're all surrounded by amazing restaurants. So after you do your shopping, you get a little hungry, you have some fantastic choices all around you. So in other words, the shopping here is a little bit special, a little bit unique, and just a ton of fun. Speaking of delicious food, if you're into seafood and you're in town, you gotta get some crabs. We all know that Maryland is all about their blue crabs and Old Bay. And Annapolis, being the foodie town that it is, has some pretty amazing choices. Now, it's pretty common to see some kind of crab appetizer or entree at many of the restaurants in and around town. Again, it's kind of a big deal. So we frequently see, you know, fries with crab meat on it, to crab pretzels, to crab cakes, to steamed crabs. Now, just a few quick recommendations. If you haven't been and you want to enjoy a good crab cake, I highly recommend checking out Carroll's Creek. It has a lovely, lovely view and you can enjoy your sandwich. You can also go to Boneyard Bar and Grill. They are known for some really lumpy crab meat. And finally, if you haven't experienced having steamed crabs, you definitely gotta head over and check out Cantler's. Even if you don't like seafood, that's okay. Annapolis has some amazing restaurants. And as one of those top things to do, you gotta go and enjoy an amazing dinner here. So whether it's the crab cakes or steakhouse, you gotta go out and enjoy Annapolis because really it is a foodie town. Number three on our list is to enjoy some time outside. Annapolis has some pretty amazing parks each with its own little appeal. Now, one of the local favorites here is Quiet Waters Park, and it's favorited for a lot of reasons. I mean, the first thing, it's huge. So they have playgrounds that are great for kids. They have a whole big field area that you can maybe play Frisbee at or just kind of hang out and read a book. They have some nice walking trails that kind of circle the whole loop. And then they have water views with some amazing sunsets right over the South River. But really, what's probably my favorite is they have a dog beach. Like, it's not huge, but you can take your dog off leash. They can run on the beach. You can throw a stick and they can chase it into the water. And I think that's pretty cool because there's not a lot of places that will allow you to have your dog off leash on a beach anywhere around here. So that's something that's a little bit unique to Quiet Waters Park and is really, really awesome. Now, if you prefer something with a bit more pep in your step, maybe you like hiking in the woods with a little bit of twists and turns and some elevation, or you like to go mountain biking, you gotta check out Annapolis Waterworks and Bacon Ridge. So Waterworks is right here in Annapolis, kind of behind the Renaissance Festival. And I would say most of the people I see like to go for a little walk or they go biking. And I'd say it's on the PetSmart side of the trailhead leading up towards the solar panels. So first it kind of winds around, kind of goes down towards this like the little water reservoir thing. And then there's a steeper climb up to the solar panels. And that whole stretch is a ton of fun. Now, if you're looking for something that's a little bit harder, maybe a little bit longer, you gotta check out Bacon Ridge, which is just over the border in Crownsville. So it's just a few minutes up the road. Now, Bacon Ridge has, you know, they have more miles of trails. They have a bike park. They have uh, just a whole bunch of stuff to keep putting more and more into it. And it's really epic and really awesome. So definitely see lots of hikers over there. Mountain biking is starting to get really kind of a big hot spot, I think, for this area, in particular at Bacon Ridge. So if you're into that kind of thing, you got to check those two places out. Now, if you prefer something a little bit slower and you like fishing, you got to check out Thomas Point Park. This place is so coveted for its fishing that people will camp out overnight to get the monthly passes. Pretty crazy. Now, don't worry, though. If you just want to go check it out for the day, it is easier just to get a day pass. So again, fishing, Thomas Point Park, that's got your number. 
Number four, get out and enjoy the water. Now, Annapolis has a ton of choices, some that are fairly budget friendly and some that you may have to sell, sell like one of your kidneys for, right? So it is still a lot of fun. The choice is up to you. So what are some of the things that you could go do? Well, for starters, stand up paddle boarding has really picked up in popularity the last few years. And there are some places that offer the board to rent as well as lessons. I know several friends that have gone out, their kids have gone, learned how to do it. Now they even got, you know, got them a board for their Christmas present and they're out there loving it up. I've seen some people even do like yoga and exercises on those things, either like in the early morning uh, for the sunrise when the water's nice and calm. I think they're crazy. I think that's awesome. I couldn't do it. I would totally fall over. What are some of the other things you can do? Well, you could go rent a boat or a jet ski, for example. Now, it's not cheap, but you could go rent it for a few hours or for the day. You know, zip up and down the Chesapeake, maybe go down the South River or something. It's a lot of fun. You know, it's just, just something to experience that might be a little bit different than something you maybe you haven't done that before. Some other options for you might be learning how to sail. You know, if you've always wanted to learn how to sail, Annapolis is definitely the place to come do it because we're known as the sailing capital of the world. Now, I know some places may disagree with that, but you get the idea. Sailing is a big part of Annapolis. So if you want to learn, there are schools here that will teach you. You could just go for the day, get your feet wet to learn the basics, or you could take several sessions and maybe someday participating in the, the races that they hold on Wednesdays. So again, sailing, learning how to sail, definitely a key option for you. Another kind of fun option that would be great for a date, there are a few different ships that do a charter, um, one with more people, some with a little bit less people, but you could, for example, go take one of those, just taking the views and the sunset, where some of the others will also include like a whole private dinner for you. So pretty cool. Again, some of these things are not necessarily cheap, but still a ton of fun. And if you're going to come and experience the Annapolis area, I highly recommend that you do something, whether it is just, you know, doing, you know, the sailing lesson or whether it's the paddle board or just going down to, you know, Truxton Park and, you know, just standing on the pier for a minute and just taking it all in. Go down to City Dock, just watch the sail go, sailboats go by. Again, you don't have to spend a ton of money. If you're able to afford your own boat and do that, hey, that's awesome. But the key is get out there, see the water, touch the water, enjoy it, because it really is a big part of the vibe that Annapolis has. So number five on the list is go explore some of the history of Annapolis. Annapolis was founded in 1649, which means we have a few hundred years of history to learn and grow and like just build upon, right? So you gotta go downtown, maybe take like a little city tour, look at the state building, take it all in. But if that, if you wanna dig a little deeper, there's also a several museums that you can go and explore. After you take in a city tour or the state building, if you wanna dig a little deeper, go check out one of the museums. We have a few different ones to choose from, everything from the Naval Academy Museum to the Maritime Museum, as well as the Annapolis Historic Museum, and finally the Banneker Douglas Museum. Number six, you got to go explore and enjoy some of the artwork that Annapolis has to offer. You may not realize this, but Annapolis really is into their art. We have two galleries at Quiet Waters Park. We have a gallery or two in downtown Annapolis. We even have a whole area in downtown Annapolis that's called the Art District, where they have an art festival on certain Sundays during the year. It is seasonal, but it is a lot of fun. You can go pick something up for a loved one. Now, even if you don't want to go buy something, just walking around downtown, you'll find several different murals, sculptures, etc. It really is pretty cool. It's something that makes this a little bit more special, a little bit more vibrant of a city. So get out there, go check out some artwork. You won't be disappointed. Speaking of art, next on our list is you got to go take in a performance. There are several venues that offer a variety of different shows and types of entertainment for you to take in. So you're bound to find something that you'll enjoy. For an example, go take something in from Maryland Hall Productions as they have everything from musicals, plays, ballet, symphony, and opera. Occasionally, they'll have a film festival as well as a magician or comedian. There's also, of course, the Classic Theater of Maryland as well as the Colonial Players who both offer a variety of shows throughout the year. So you'll always have something to choose from. Number eight, go enjoy the nightlife that Annapolis has to offer. I was pleasantly surprised when I moved to Annapolis to find out really how much stuff was happening. So if you like to go out for drinks and maybe hear some live music, you'll have plenty of choices throughout the year. If you prefer maybe a little bit more of a serious show, of course you have your local bands and famous people coming through Ramshead on stage. Maybe you wanted something a little bit more chill? 
well then do dinner underneath the stars it is seasonal on those warmer parts of the year but they'll close off a whole section of the road and the participating restaurants put their tables and chairs out and serve you right underneath the stars it's super cool and a lot of fun number nine is just to take a couple hours to explore the architecture in annapolis you know, one of the fun parts about Annapolis is that it's an older city, right? So we have the state building, we have some brick sidewalks, we have some really cool looking storefronts, we have some really beautiful old row homes and little detached homes that are, you know, through Murray Hill and Eastport. And just go, whether you're walking downtown or whether you hop in a car and take a little stroll around, it's pretty cool just to take a couple hours and take in the architecture because it just has this really cool charm to it. It's a little bit unique and it's just, it's Annapolis. And finally, on our top 10 things to do in Annapolis, we have sightseeing. Now you don't have to be a tourist or a visitor to go and enjoy some of what Annapolis has to offer. There's some really great spots that you should go check out even if you're already local. Some of the ones that we would suggest to kind of get you started would be the Maryland State House, the Naval Academy, Thomas Point Lighthouse, William Paca House, and the Hammond Harwood House. Now, some of these have self-guided tours where some have a guided one. We do recommend that you go ahead and check out their website before going to not only check the hours, but also to see if you have to buy a ticket in advance. As you can see, there are a ton of things to do in and around Annapolis. If you think I missed something, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.